Hello Valued Viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. All the way back in May 2023 we did this war game. Could Darwin, North Australia, survive a huge Chinese naval carrier strike? It was a really good war game but you guys wanted us to come back and do it with some changes that you requested. Just to remember what happened last time, the Chinese did massive damage to the RAN, the Australian Navy, destroying almost all of their combat vessels. As well as that they did a moderate amount of damage to the Australian Air Force, destroying all 4th gen aircraft and some 5th gen aircraft. In return, Australia did zero damage to the Chinese naval vessels, but wiped out their entire 50 or so J-15 aircraft. At the end, we decided it was a draw, so we're coming back this time for blood. I've collated the three most common changes that you guys wanted, all on the Australian side. Very little changes you guys wanted to the Chinese side, and there's not much I could change even if I wanted to. Change number one, Australia to have 200 Lorazm stealth anti-ship missiles. So last time I used the entire air force in air-to-air -air mode with air-to-air -air missiles. This time you want to use the anti-ship missiles and I checked and indeed in 2020 Australia did buy 200 US Lorazm missiles. Second change again to Australia, the Hobart destroyers. Last time I had them using 16 SM2s and 32 ESSMs. You guys wanted that changed 40 SM2s with 32 ESSMs, so I've done that. And finally, last time we had the 4th Gen Super Hornets carrying AM120C7 missiles, range about 65 miles. You want that now upgrading to the AM120D1 missile, range about 90 miles. The reason I used the C7 is because, according to my investigation, Australia did not have enough Ds to go around, but this time, because some of the aircraft are going to be carrying anti-shipping now, there will be enough AM120Ds to go around, so I've done that as well. First, we need to talk about the role play and the geography. The role play is very simple. China, for whatever reason, has decided to attack the northwest of Australia, centering on Darwin here, with a carrier strike group. Their objective is to do as much damage to the Australian Navy and Air Force as possible, laying way for a follow-up attack of an invasion force or whatever it is they want to do in this fictitious scenario. Geography viewers, we do not have the geography that we need in-game, so I've had to make it myself. A North Australian map is coming out at some point, but I don't know if I'm still going to be making videos when that comes out, so I really wanted to get it done. I'm trying to get everything done off my bucket list that I can. So I've drawn a 170-mile stretch of the relevant Australian coast. Centering around Darwin here, of course, for reference, Gunpoint, Hotham and Dundee Beach here. We have Tiwi Island here. Everything is to scale. And up here we have the southeastern bit of Timor Lest. Distances, 380 miles Australia to Timor. The Chinese strike group are 200 miles from Darwin. And also of relevance, inland Catherine Air Base will be 176 miles from the coast. Next, let's look at unit overview. I've changed as little as I possibly can for this viewers. I want to keep it as similar to the last attempt as possible, only changing the things I need to change. So, Chinese Navy, plan 1CV, the most modern type 003. Technically not in service yet, but let's bend the rules a bit and say it is in service because that's what we used last time. Four destroyers, type 052D, another two destroyers, type 055. A massive air wing of J-15B, 50 of them and two KJ-600 AEW total, seven ships, 52 aircraft. Australia have remained the same. The RAN has 11 combat ships, three Hobart destroyers, and seven Anzac frigates, which we've got here today. Australia has 27 combat Super Hornets, and we've got them in today. They also have 63 F-35As, and we've got them in today, two wedge tails. Total, 11 ships and 92 aircraft. Let's smash straight into the details. China has a typical uh, carrier strike group, as I like to model in modernity, 200 miles away from the coast. They have at the center their CV. They have 10 by 10 mile defensive box. 052Ds there, 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 there. 055 attack destroyers there and there. Aboard the carrier are 50 J-15Bs, all AI, and they are all air-to-air. -air. Remember, their objective is to damage the Australian Air Force as much as possible. Today, everyone set to ace skill level with the same options. They will be equipped with their usual loadout of six. PL-15s range over 100 miles and two PL-10s for self-defense. They'll take off at their max takeoff rate using three catapults to simulate the Fujian. That's as close as we can get, viewers. Uh, AWACS there, AWACS there. 
Australia, the role play is that the Chinese attack has not gone unnoticed and they've had 24 hours to get in position. They know that China is coming for Darwin and so they've positioned all 11 combat ships in mutual support defending Darwin. Three Hobards and 11 Anzacs. Now, we don't have the Hobard, we don't have the Anzac in DCS, and we probably never will, but we can actually get quite close to them. So what I've done is I've taken a modernized Ticonderoga for the Hobart Destroyer. I've removed all of the missiles, and I've just put back what I need to. Uh, 32 ESSM and 40 SM2. I know it doesn't look like the right ship, but in terms of missiles, which is what's really important, it is basically the right ship. Same thing with the Anzac, except I've used uh, Arleigh Burke 2A. Again, stripped all of the missiles off, and I've put back 32 ESSM. In terms of the Air Force, as I said, there are two types of combat planes. Australia has Super Hornets and F-35A. There are two bases in this part of Australia, Darwin here and the larger base at Catherine here. Darwin is a smaller base in terms of its support, so we can only have one squadron there. So that would be the large squadron of Super Hornets. Uh, 27 in total, equipped with A120D1s, as we saw before, range officially about 90 miles, uh, 8 D1s two sidewinders and a fuel tank they will be defending darwin they'll be the point defense at the front as i said australia had 24 hours notice so they've moved all of their air force across the vastness of australia to darwin and to catherine here the f-35s which are split into three squadrons today i'm pretty sure that's right as per real life will all be starting at catherine here and i've simulated them taking off of a maximum rate of one every 30 seconds I'm just going to call them Red Squadron, Yellow Squadron, and uh, Purple Squadron, 63 as we saw before. Red Squadron are going to be air-to-air, -air, otherwise set up the same as the other jets. I couldn't work out whether they have the modern block sidekick upgrade uh, that uh, the American planes and some of the other F-35s have, so I've just assumed that they have, allowing them to carry six AMRAMs, so they will be carrying six AIM-120D1s, as of course Australia does run, and a couple of fuel tanks, which they will dump as they get into combat to turn them into stealth mode. Now, because they're coming from so far away, I can't just charge them into combat. I've asked them to get to steer point two here, near the coast, saving fuel to that point. At that point, they'll light their burners and start the attack. Then a uh, yellow squadron is going to be anti-shipping squadron. They're going to be equipped with four Lorasms each, plus a couple of sidewinders for self-defense. Rather than just dribble in flight by flight like I usually do, we're doing a more realistic time on target attack, or I'm trying to anyway. If you can see the kind of wiggly route that I've asked them to do, so that they arrive to the coast at about the same time. Once they arrive at the coast 200 miles away, they'll fire the Lorasms on a big time on target mass attack that will give them the best chance they can of beating the Chinese defense. I've no idea whether that's going to succeed or not and I don't like scripting these things for YouTube views viewers as you've probably noticed by now so I'm sending in another squadron. It's a difficult decision when I do this because I don't know as the real defenders wouldn't know how many they should put as anti-ship, which squadron should be air-to-air, -air, which should be anti-ship. It's a really difficult decision for a commander to make. So I've gone all in and I've said two squadrons for anti-ship. So another squadron here doing exactly the same thing. Again, they'll take off 20 minutes later. Another 80 Lorasms and we'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a couple of AWACS there and there, wedge tails as well. Oh, and sorry, I forgot to say, of the 27 F-18s, eight are already airborne and patrolling. So, 19 are here at the base, uh, 4 here, airborne and ready to fight, 4 are here and airborne and ready to fight. In terms of predictions, viewers, I have absolutely no idea. I suppose we should quickly define what winning looks like. So, in my mind, the Chinese, a win would be to destroy a lot or most of the RAN, the Navy, and the RAF the Air Force. In terms of an Australian win, it's going to be doing sufficient damage to the Chinese to stop their plans. Destroying ships, destroying most of their aircraft, whatever that is. In terms of predictions, well, obviously it's impossible for me to predict, so I'm just going to go based on what happened last time. What happened last time was Chinese missiles smashed the Australian Navy. They have been buffed this time. They've got more SM2s as per real life, but I suspect probably they're going to still take heavy losses. In terms of air to air, the F 18s, they're going to get smashed again. They've got older missiles and older radars than the J 15Bs. But their job is to really keep the Chinese at bay until the F 35s arrive. If they can do that, they've done their job. 
How will the F-35s fare against the J-15s? They'll probably do pretty well. But have I allowed enough in air-to-air -to, -air to do the job to hold the Chinese back while the Lorazm carriers get in? That I don't know, viewers. And again, that's the difficulty of being a commander. You can't see forward in time. So we're going to have to find out the hard way. Viewers, uh, I'm just going to try and enjoy myself. I've had a lot of stress lately with uh, stuff going on in real life, as happens in real life. And uh, I just hope to de-stress a bit. And uh, three, two, one, go. First to fire will probably be the Chinese again. The 055s and 052Ds firing now hypersonic and supersonic missiles. Small scoreboard on today, uh, but I'll try and keep you appraised of what's going on. So let's have a look at Super Hornets airborne. Charging into combat, we've got Super Hornets at Darwin, which I think is an international but has space for a squadron of uh, Air Force. We've got first flight of F-35s taking off from Catherine, uh, starting in non-stealth mode. They'll drop their tanks once they get into combat and become stealth mode. YJ-21s, top speed mark 8 to 10. Impact speed's going to be about mark 5 today. Uh, we've had to go for the non-lofting version today because they're firing from a moving ship versus a moving ship, and that's our restriction, unfortunately. Don't worry too much, the probability of intercepts will be about the same. It's really based on the speed. And as you can see at the bottom, the speed is 5,000 knots and decreasing. And here come the uh, SM2s, of which each ship has 40 of them today, each Hobart. SM2 doesn't really have the ability to take down these hypersonic missiles, which are now 4,500 knots. So probability of intercept is going to be pretty low today, but we'll see how it goes. ESSM uh, block one also out. 90 SAMs out, 92 SAMs out, 22 SM2, uh, 80 ESSM. In goes the first YJ-21. It's got through the SM2, no problem. Is it going to get past ESSM? Very probably. Terminal maneuver starting. Makes it harder to intercept. I apologise, viewers, but you're about to see a sunken ship. Or not. Scores. Sorry, viewers, so much going on. One sunken ship. I missed it, obviously. It was a Tycho, which is the Hobart. Look how many miss missiles have come out. Unbelievable amount. I think we're about to lose an Anzac here. For the eagle-eyed view, you'll see the flight paths of the ESSMs are wiggly. That's because the YJ-21s now have a kind of terminal wiggling maneuver that makes them harder to intercept. Not impossible, but harder. Anzac down. Got through. Oh dear, one Anzac down, one Hobart down, 132 defensive missiles out, very impressive. Terminal maneuver starting. ESSM as good as it is, only so much it can do. Well, that's a bad start from Australia, but unfortunately we were expecting it viewers. No SM3, no e uh, SM6, which is both what you really need to hit those missiles in their mid-course. Attacking them at the very last minute is only going to end pretty badly. Not many missiles sent out by China. Not sure why, but I'm sure they've got a good reason for it. I am assuming they're going to start firing again. J-15's out. Just a reminder, the job of the J-15's today is to establish air superiority and do as much damage to the um, Australian Air Force as possible. One YJ-18 coming in ever so slightly. Oh, there they go. More missiles coming up. They fire in a strange sequence. I don't know why they fire in such an odd sequence. If it was me, I would just push the fire button and fire everything, but... It is what it is. Uh, they've intercepted that YJ-18 with ease. So far, two ships down, no aircraft down. YJ-21's flying past the uh, PL-15s at 5,000 knots. That would make quite the sonic boom. Anzacs and Hobards defending. 30 SM-2s out and 120 ESSMs out. Again, not sure why China is going so easy on them today. SM2's missed. Terminal maneuver starting. It can't turn very tight because of the speed, but just a tiny bit of movement. Look what it does. Oh, look what it does to the interceptor. 4,000 knots. Interceptors out. Missed. Missed. Anzac down. Three ships down and another coming in. Oh, and an A120D out. Oh, he shot. Pause. Sorry, that's so funny. 
that Super Hornet shot an A120D at a hypersonic YJ-21. I mean, that's just impressive. The balls on that guy. Finishing it off, boom. Anti-shipping missiles just dribbling out slowly. Miserable attack from China today. Not the foggiest idea why they're doing it. Aircraft front smoothing within firing range of 100 or so miles. And uh, just as I speak, first missiles come out. There it is, PL-15. The advantage of air-to-air -air missiles today goes to China. Official range of this missile is uh, 120 miles at Mark 4. The official range of the A120D1 that the Australians have, 90 miles at Mark 4. So it will favour uh, the Chinese in this case. More YJ-21s coming out, overtaking the missile by four times the speed of sound. Six air-to-air -air missiles out, and you can see the Hornets just haven't had a chance to reply. There they go. A120 out. Ah, it's a C7. Did I miss one of the Hornets? I think, pause, I do apologise, viewers. It appears I missed one of the flights of Hornets um, from C7 uh, to D. So, sorry, a thing happened. I am not expecting it to make a huge difference. That said, he's probably going to shoot a J-15 down by the looks of it, so maybe it was a good thing I forgot. Surprisingly easy to remember to forget. He did shoot a J-15 down. Maybe C is the way to go, viewers. And he's dodged the PL-15s. Friggin' hero, Hornet. One J uh, PL-15 down. Sorry, one J-15 down to no Super Hornets. Right, more YJ-1s. Got to concentrate what's important here. Smashing past the uh, SM-2. Interceptor wiggling around. Trying to find a intercept course. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Missed. Oh, 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 oh it missed the ship. It missed the ship. What a weird war game we're having here, viewers. Hit the YJ-21. Absolutely amazing to watch. Uh, right, so what's happening? Two uh, J-15s down to one uh, F-18 down. They've really done really well. They've really done brilliantly. Uh, just avoiding these PL-15s. Just evaded it. Well, you never know what you're going to get until you run it on the road, viewers. And this is a classic case in point here. Okay, finally, the China's waking up and starting to pump missiles in. Two Super Hornets down to two J-15s down. Only five AMRAMs fired so far to 27 PL-15s. And that's what you get if the range is much longer. Just not much opportunity to fire the AMRAMs. I'm pretty sure I changed all of them to A120D. I must have forgot just one flight, viewers. Won't make much difference. And a great evasion there. PL-15 being fired at the maximum range by the looks of things, which means by the time they get to the Super Hornet, they're at kind of five, 600 knots. And they're pretty easy to evade. Well done. Yes, see these A120Ds. Yes, it was fine, viewers. It may have even just, just been one plane, to be honest. Uh, A120D, about as good as a PL-15. In fact, it's basically the same missile, apart from the range, um, in terms of what we can model and what's declassified. 1,400 knots, 1,300 knots. Same problem, it's probably fired at maximum range, so it's just not going to be very effective. Wow, five Super Hornets down, two J-15s down. You know what? We were expecting the uh, Super Hornets that be less effective than the J-15 due to radar, due to missile range. Brilliant kill. Brilliant kill. Three J-15s down. Good missile, that is. Superior motor, superior avionics than the uh, C model variants. This guy's beaten his. Hold well on. I mean, although they beat it, they burn an awful lot of fuel evading it. So, oh, I do apologise. I've been another C7 viewers. <sighs> Look, the same plane fired Ds and C7s. I must have got the loadout mixed up. Never mind. In the grand scheme of things, it's really not going to make a huge amount of difference, I don't think. Peel 15. Rocking in. 600 knots. Oh. Fired a missile and evaded. Brilliant. Brilliant flying from the Australians. Seven Super Hornets down to three J-15s down. And what a match it's turning out to be. Now, where did those latest anti-shipping missiles get to? They're only the subsonic ones. So I think all the hypersonics have been fired, viewers, and only killed three ships. So the ships have actually defended themselves bloody well. A120Ds in the air, A120Cs in the air, PL-15s in the air. This guy's about to get chopped. Jesus, so many close shaves. Brilliant, brilliant flying from these guys. Some C7s rocking in now. 
good thing about the C7 is they tend to fire them about 30 miles, which makes a much more high probability of kill. Pop. This guy on his way back home, being chased home by a C7. Uh, no, he's out of fuel and or out of ammo. Uh, now, I've reused the AI from the previous mission, and from memory, I set them to RTB once they're out of long-range missiles, which I don't do anymore. Um, nowadays, in more modern missions, I let them just run in and get themselves killed uh, because it helps my PC out. But this is older one. I asked them to RTB, rearm, and come back out. So you may see that today. We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. PL-15's going in. AIM-120D's out. Uh, the lion's share of missiles being fired are the AIM-120D, so... Which is a better missile, obviously. No chance of dodging that. Oh, A120Ds shooting down YJ-18s. Shooting them down. Saving the Anzacs. Saving the Hobards. Australians are flying so well. I mean, they're losing. Don't get me wrong. And we knew they were going to lose because of the reasons we talked about. But they're doing brilliant. Flying. That's why no Chinese missiles have been getting through. The Super Hornets have been sacrificing themselves and shooting them down. Ladies and gem gentlemen, I give you the RAAF. So well done, great play, great play. So far, the RAN has defended itself better than last time for reasons I don't know. The missiles have changed, whatever. Um, only three have been sunk. That said, China, sorry, yes, China have only fired 44 anti-shipping missiles. That means Super Hornets have shot down probably 20, 20 anti-shipping missiles. I mean, that really is good stuff. And these absolutely are interceptable. They're well within the remit of the uh, AIM-120D. Uh, 1,800 knots they're travelling at. In real life, they actually travel a bit slower. PL-15 chasing this guy down. And he's ditched it. Well done. Brilliant flying from the Super Hornets. I say that every time I say that, more get shot down. I'm missing all the kills, and I do apologise, viewers. Good evasion. 14 Super Hornets down of 27. 7 J-15s down of 50. A massive salvo of PL-15s now rocking in, chasing the Super Hornets back. So far, red of fire, 75 PL-15s, amazing. 44 anti-ship missiles of various types. Blues of fire, 43 AMRAMs of different types and 198 SAMs, SM2 and ESSM of two blocks. Impressive. PL-15s now going terminal. Fired from a long, long way away. Look, did you see it switch its target there? That's new coding as well, viewers. He said, I want that one. No, 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 no. I want that one. But the Super Hornet's just before me beautifully today. If that was 20 knots faster, it would have got him. This Super Hornet is out. He's done. He's out of fuel. He's out of ammo. Uh, at this point, uh, from what I, how I remember I coded it, I asked him to go back to Darwin, rearm, and come back out. So that's going to be fun seeing that. This guy beating his AIM-120Ds. Too slow. Still, no other anti-ship missiles have got past the Hornets. And you can see them shooting down more and more of the YJ-18s. Now that, in my view, is a great use of Hornet hardware. Because what's important is defending his ships. And that's what he's doing. So well done. 47, of which 27 or so have been intercepted. Pop. Pop. Brilliant, brilliant flying. As well, at the same time, as dodging these PL-15s. That's pretty cool, right? In fact, I would say this is the best I've seen any DCS AI pilot fly probably in my eight years, so well done. I know they're just a bunch of subroutines, but the way it works out with randomizations and stuff, sometimes it's almost like they have their own little personalities. The Chinese always seem to fly like robots, whereas America fly like America. The British seem to fly very plucky, as for real life. The Australians all fly with all heart. I just need to fly some Italians. I want some flamboyant Italian flying. Fly upside down all the time. Unfortunately, um, by sacrificing themselves, they are literally sacrificing themselves because PL-15s are taking them out. So 18 Super Hornets down. But I still think they've done a sterling job taking out all those YJ-21s. Sorry, YJ-18s. And what they've done as well somehow is kept the uh, PL-15s at bay. So kudos to that. The PL-15s are flying a very logical conveyor belt today. They fire their PL-15s. They turn around and go home. Remember, this is how I coded them originally. Uh, so it's how I'm encoding them again this time. More anti-shipping missiles out. Uh, YJ, uh, sorry, F-35s now in combat. Oh, you were supposed to drop your fuel tanks and you didn't. Never mind. It, it, just imagine they've been dropped for you. I've set their RCS to imagine that they have been dropped. If uh, the Australians had let those YJ-18s get through, I guarantee, as we saw last time, half as many vessels would, would be sunk again. So kudos 
kudos. Chinese are taking very few losses. They've only lost eight J-15s. They're just not committing uh, as much as they usually would in a modern war game. For the reasons I've said, they're going to fire their six missiles off. They're going to turn around and go home. Eight J-15s down for 20 F-18s. 200 SAMs fired, 76 AMRAMs fired. Nearly as many AMRAMs fired now as PL-15s. All the F-35s are now in and firing their missiles. And now this is really gonna upset the Chinese. Oh no, they're shooting down the YJ-18s as well. I know it's not very sexy viewers because you all wanna see ships getting blown up and stuff, but why not shoot the YJ-18s down? It's saving the ships. Again, it's not as good viewing as usual, but... They're doing what they need to do to save the Navy. I kind of like it. I think it shows some quite, in this case, some quite good decision making. That said, they don't want to do it and just ignore the pair of J-15s. That would be a bad thing to do. And they've let a J-15, they've got so distracted by the missiles, they've let a J-15 get within 18 miles and now they're going to get shot. And that is all their fault. Or oh, maybe not. Weird battle, viewers. Weird, weird battle. Peel 15's going for this lightning. Can his stealth beat it? No, it can't. Wow, yes it can. Dogfight, or yep, dogfight. Nine J J15's down, 23 Super Hornets down, no F35's down, three ships down. And I don't think any more Chinese anti-ship missiles are going to get through because the F35's have just got it so sewn up. Peel 15 on this F35. Evaded due to stealth. Well done. And merge. Oh, friendly fire! Got shot by his own PL-15. It's going to happen when you have when you're firing at stealths when fourth gen planes are near. Your own missile will end up shooting your own plane down. Friendly fire again. That is actually really realistic. That is what would happen. That's kind of crazy. Uh, right. Oh, wow. F-35s are just absolutely pasted. All Hornets, apart from three, are dead. 26 minutes into the sim. And still, all Chinese. 67 anti-ship missiles they've fired. I can guarantee that would have worked, worked, wiped out the entire of the Australian Navy. 47 shot down by AMRAMs. Brilliant flying. J-15 kills going up now. 11 down. As soon as those F-35s got in, chasing them in. Forcing friendly fires. It's kind of cool to watch, right? PL-10 out. Uh, close range missile. PL-15 out. Finally a dead lightning question mark. Yep, got his non-stealthy bits. One lightning down. No, sorry, three. Wow, three F-35s down. Well, they've thrown themselves into it, you know. They've not tried to save themselves, so... Well, not obviously. So they're going to they're gonna get losses. You know, they're great planes, but within 20 miles, it's more or less just a normal plane. 12 J-15s down, 4 F-35s down, 24 F-18s down, 3 ships down. Aim 120D from this F-35 here. Popped him up. 13 J-15s down. The j 15 is really suffering. And look at the front line. The front line's moved from about here all the way about 60 miles up here as soon as the F-35s got in, which is probably no surprise to anyone. But I thought I'd mention it. 15 J-15s down. Huge amount of missiles fired. Still no anti-shipping missiles have got through. All taken out by AMRAMs, as we've been seeing. Pop, amazing work. 72 of those uh, anti-shipping missiles have been fired. I don't think China's got many more of them, he says, as he literally watches a bunch of missiles come out. But they don't, you know, they don't have infinite amounts. They will run out. F-35s right at the front line. Um, supported by A120D. I'd say it's 90% A120D fire today, 10% uh, C7, so I think I've got away with it, viewers. 16 J15s down, and just a kill rate, just absolutely smashed it. Although we've just lost a whole bunch of F35s. Seven down. Don't know what that is, viewers, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. And what's really important is not their losses, it's how much damage they've done, and they've done a huge amount of damage. They've pushed the front line way back. Why is that important? Well, it lets my squadrons of um, anti-shippers get in, which is what's really important, I suppose, for Australia. 17 J, 15 down out of 50, probably about 10 of RTB. So more than 50% have been pacified one way or another. It's only going to get worse for China now that the F-35s and they just, the, the Peel 15s just didn't do well enough. They didn't fly well enough. I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. At this point, you're going to say, well, what about the um, Chinese stealth fighters? Are the um, 
J35. Well, newsflash, J35 doesn't actually exist yet. I only used it in the 2027 future battles. It doesn't exist in real life now, so they can't use it now. And this is a now battle. Oh I'll take it back, China. Good pilot. F-35 is heading in. Right, let's check on the anti-shippers. Still a million trillion miles to go. Uh, because of their weird stuff. Both squadrons of anti-shippers are now out. 30 minutes into the sim, all F-35s have entered combat and are firing their missiles. Super Hornets, RTB and landing at Darwin. Only two Super Hornets survived that one there, and there's another one in combat somewhere that I have no hope of finding. Still concentrating on shooting down. Here's how good an F-35 is, at least in the sim. It can shoot down anti-ship missiles and fend off J-15s at great kill rates. Now that is a good plane, viewers. And we think we've got it pretty well. I mean, we, there's a lot of systems we've got modeled. But in terms of what's important for here, I think they're pretty good. Front line was here, is now here. Push, what, 80, 90 miles back. It's the classic 4th gen versus 5th gen kind of kill ratio that we see. Evaded. Not evaded. Bang, bang, boom, boom. F-35 mopping out of the front here. J-15 out of ammo. RTB. That one, RTB. More taking it off. Let's go and have a look at the carrier. I haven't seen it today. We don't have Fujian, so we just use a American carrier. Uh, and we use just three catapults to simulate the three catapults of the Fujian, which I think is fair enough. Mother still churning out her babies, her J-15s. PL-15 missed completely. PL-15 chasing that F-35 down. Nope, missed completely. That happens when you're fighting 0 0.002 uh, square meter radar cross section, which I forgot to mention we're using today, which means they can be targeted at 18 miles by a fighter with an AESA radar, about 30 miles by a ship. 23 J15 down, 25 Super Hornet down, 8 F35 down. Now, here's one thing I'm slightly worried about F35s, the ones that survived, they're out of ammo, they're out of fuel, they're out of whatever. Finally, dump the tanks. They're RT being to Darwin. Uh, they will refuel and they will rearm there, but it takes like ages. So I'm ever so slightly worried there's going to be a window now where the J-15s are not being covered and they're going to come and kill my Lorazm guys. And if that happens, there's nothing I can do about it. I guess that's one of the beauties of having humans in here. I can direct them much more smartly, which I can't do with my AI. We'll just have to see what happens for you. Um, uh, right, what am I going to do now? So I want to see how many J-15s are remaining. So that guy taking off. No, that's a guy in an orbit. That guy taking off there. Oh wow, group 14. He's group, he's flight 14 out of 15 flights, so almost all of the J-15s have taken off now. J-15 is pouring out, F-35 is pouring in, Amram is doing Amram things. It's going to catch him. He's gone for a notch, but it's going to catch him. Oh, he's heading into the missile. Why not, sir? Why not? End it quicker. Dead. Didn't even fire a missile. Stupid Chinese person. 27 J-15s down to 35 Australian aircraft down, so still they're winning the air war technically. In fact, China are just winning all round, thinking about it. They've won the air. They're winning the air war and they're winning the naval war. Although they didn't do as well as last time, they're still winning. But then again, my Lorasm guys haven't fired yet. Super Hornet, taxiing, kill taxi, shut his engines down, put his canopy up, rearm, go back out, do his thing. Yes, the 15th and final uh, three ship is about to head up, marking the last J-15s. All right, this really is coming down to the wire, isn't it? Amrams falling down on these guys' heads, but they're just fired too far away. In terms of the distance that the missiles are fired at, I can control it, viewers, but it's a parameter I set up at the beginning of the mission. It cannot be changed halfway, so it's very hard for me to know what to set it to because it's something you really need to know dynamically. A human pilot would be able to change on the fly, AI not so much. So we set them to fire at about 60% about of the maximum range of the missile or 70%, something like that. So today they'll be fired at about 80 miles, something like that. Missile just missed for some reason. All... Chinese anti-ship missiles have been fired. 74 missiles were fired. 54, unbelievably, were intercepted by AMRAMs. Only 20 got through, sinking three ships. So uh, uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant effort by the Australians for that. Look at this missile. It's tracking right above the carrier. It may even hit the carrier. It may hit the carrier. Right, bunch more J-15s getting shot out there. Almost all F-35s that have survived are now RTB to rearm and refuel. 
That's good and it's bad. It's good because they'll get up and fight again. It's bad because there's no cover until they do that and it takes about a quarter of an hour. Okay, Lorazm's guys are here now. Are they going to fire the Lorazm's? Is everything going to work? I hope so because I spent frigging ages trying to get this to work. whoop ti whoop viewers! 80... Oh, why are you turning around? No, it's fine. 80 Lorazm's being fired. Time on target by the RAAF. That's a thing of beauty when that works, viewers. Right, last F-35, well, last F-35 just got smashed down. Last F-35s are getting shot, but again, they've just sent themselves into... It's probably good. It's probably worked so much as weird things have happened, but it's all worked out for the best, viewers. Last F-35s have decided to sacrifice themselves, but it's what I need, because I need the Lorasms not to be intercepted, right? Last this F-35, again, sacrifice himself. He's going to die. If not now, then by the next missile, what does it matter? Those are the very last J-15s. Flight 15. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yep, they fully sacrificed themselves. So, now let's have a look at this. What's going to happen here? He is out of ammo. He's going home. He has 50% ammo. He, 60% ammo. He, 60% ammo. So, probably about 50% effectiveness of the last flight. So, we almost, almost took all of the J-15s down. Well, not killed them, but made them ineffective. And the Lorasms are now out. 80, oh, only 62. Huh. Some have not fired. Well, that's just a game being the game, I'm afraid, viewers. That said, he probably still will fire, maybe. I don't know. Look at them down there. Can you see them down there? See their trail? 62 is not bad. I would prefer 80. And when I tested it in isolation, 80 did fire. But all round, things have worked pretty well. Ah, now here's... Uh, yes, unfortunately... I was wrong. More YJ-18s are being fired, um, and there's no F-35s left to intercept them, I'm afraid. These guys are set to anti-ship. They will not intercept missiles. So we may lose more American vessels, but uh, sorry, Australian vessels, but you know what? It doesn't matter. They've done so bloody well so far protecting them. Three J-15s remain. Now, they're probably going to do an awful lot of damage because there's nothing left to oppose them. The only people now to oppose them are going to be the people at Darwin who are still rearming. Why have you got out? Get back in now. Here we go. Going for the last Hobart. ESSM doing their job. The YJ-21 I'm really worried about. 217 Sam's fired. Hobart down. They go at three times the speed of sound viewers. It's just not easy to do it. So, four ships down. Two Hobart, two Anzac. Still better than last time. I think about seven or eight killed last time. So, with that done... Oh, they're turning round. They're turning round. They've run out. Oh, I don't know what they're doing. They are sort of turning round, aren't they? Well, they were engaged in a big battle with F-35s. There's every chance they've run all their fuel out, viewers. Going at low level. Yes, they're going home. Maybe they saw that coming towards them and decided now was the time to go. Strangely, it's the F-35. They're still chasing the Lorasms in. I certainly did not program them to do that, viewers. I think it's because some of them just haven't fired yet. It's just a game being a bit weird. Yeah, some of them haven't fired. They got stuck. They're stuck in a kind of firing loop. Second group are not that far off firing now. And all those F-35s are going to land. First F-35 has landed. Shutting down, refueling, rearming. Okay, these guys are starting to land on their carrier. Well right done, boys. Good fight. You did well. You shot down 37 Australians, including F-12, F-35. Brilliant flying, brilliant flying. Oh, look, that guy's taking off again. Okay. The first ones have rearmed and now taking off again. Cool, huh? I actually was not expecting that. Oh, no. They're actually a different flight. They're Flight 16. I don't remember programming a Flight 16. Who the hell are you? Oh yes, the 16 flight's not... Sorry, I did my maths wrong, viewers. There is another flight. I don't know why they're waiting for so long to take off. That's problematic. Another flight has taken off. Alright, I don't know what that's going to do. Okay, these ones are firing now as well. Well, I hope they fired them a bit better than the front guys did, who've just really made a bit of a hash of it, to be honest. Right, we're now in a weird position where the last flight is finally taking off and they're going to come and shoot with the F-35s down, but weird things happen, viewers. Weird things happen.
All right, we've got three now down. Rearming and refueling. Right, Lorasms are now 21 miles away. They can't be shot at, viewers, by uh, the ships because the AWACS can't see them. They're stealth missiles, obviously. The ships themselves can only shoot them at, what, 20 miles? But essentially, when they come over the horizon, probably more like 15 miles. Now, will they get shot at by these J-15s? Unfortunately for China, not. I guess they're just too stealthy to be seen or something. Anyway, missiles are being fired. Here we go. 055, start firing the, at the front of the picket, obviously. Interestingly, cost to Australia $15 billion, cost to China $2.4 billion. Place your bets now, please. How effective will it be? I suggest 60 are probably not going to get through. They're coming in a bit too ragtag for my liking. Also, China's got its box defence, which we've proved uh, in a straight-up fight is the best defence uh, for all types of missiles. 10-mile box. It allows maximum firing time uh, against all types of missiles. You never know. There's a 055. <laughs> this one's got through. This one's got through. Unnoticed. See, Wiz? Boom. Shot down. Oh, there's a ship down. A 055's been here. I apologize, viewers. I've missed it. Somewhere in the fray, a 055 got hit, has been sunk by Lorazans. Overwhelmed. Wow. I was not expecting that. And again. Leave him alone. He's already dead. Amazing. Right. Pause. Sorry. What's going on? They've just been overwhelmed. They've just been overwhelmed. Didn't even get a chance to fire a sea whiz. Two 055s down. And the carrier's about to be hit. I don't know what China did so bad, but I set everything up as I always do. 80... Uh, God, I can't read it. Carry it down. Wow, look at that. Don't forget, stuff in the background is always being changed in core game. It appears the Rasm is good again. Two five twos down. Two five. Oh, it's not even finished yet. Well defended. Wow, that was uh, interesting. Friendly fire? Question mark. <laughs> what an orb. Oh, viewers, what a battle. What a battle. Oh, wow, look, that J-15 got on and just got in and destroyed the entire F-35 squadron. The entire anti-shipping squadron. Oh, he, he got his tail shot off for his, for his work, but he shot down 20 F-35s when, when all that was happening. Whoops. Uh, and that's a bit silly because the F-35s should have RTB'd, but they got bugged and they went in with the missiles and it is what it is. Wow, we viewers. So... Oh, uh, what's happening with these? Are they going to... Who are these shoot for shot at? F-85s? No? Don't know. Something. Doesn't really matter anymore. Because the freaking carrier is down. What a beast of a battle, viewers. We need to sit and... Oh, there's the carrier. Look. Bye-bye, 003 Fujiani. Apparently, you should not have attacked Australia. Oh, it's still going on, look. I'm not sure where these guys are going to land now. They're going to have to land at Timor. They're going to have to land at... Uh, don't know. Go north. Philippines. Somewhere. And just in case it wasn't enough, there's 80 Rasms, but we don't need them. So, viewers, let us um, debrief that and try and work out what happened. China shot at the RAN and killed four vessels, but seven survived because the Super Hornets threw themselves in the way like a, a bodyguard. Hello. Um, and um, uh, and shot, uh, whatever that is, 63 anti-ship missiles down, which is brilliant. They also defended the J-15s pretty well, although they all died apart from one. F-35 then came in and did a uh, brilliant work taking out the J-15s, pushed them all the way back, creating a vacuum in the rear where the boof, where the um, Lorasms could be fired. The Lorasms were fired pretty badly, but amazingly overwhelmed a carrier group. So I guess 62, I guess there's that limit. The sensors just start to break down and 62 went through that limit and it wiped out Oh, the whole fleet. There's two 052s left and what are they going to do? Not a lot. So absolute kudos this time for... A, the AI that flew on the whole,
brilliantly, to be honest, on both sides. Very few real problems that, you know, made a difference. And uh, kudos to you, the viewers, for recommending these changes uh, because, of course, Australia does have these missiles now. It could use them. Would it use all uh, 160 at once like we've done? To be honest, it probably didn't need to. Good Lord, anti-ship missiles still being fired. I guess it's not over yet, viewers. Right, off we go again. Why would that happen now? Your guess is as good as mine, viewers. Look at that guy gunning them down. <laughs> an anti-ship, an anti-shipper is gunning them down. That is just deserves, viewers. Wow, what a long battle. 59 minutes in, 59 minutes. Maybe they realized they were gonna die and just thought, bollocks, do it, let's just end everything, right? Don't wanna take too much of your time, so we'll just blast it through. Defended! Ran win! Now we obviously know what's going to happen here, viewers, but we'll enjoy it nonetheless. But strangely, completely failing to kill them. Take that back. Well, another 80 missiles managed to kill one. I guess they just went weird. It's just DTS being DTS viewers. Don't look into it too far. Uh, right, we do need to do the final scores. China lost 41 J-15s, but in reality, 50 will be lost when everything's said and done. Six ships, uh, one CV, two 5.5s, and two 5.3.5.2Ds. They fired 156 PL-15s, two PL-10s, 90 anti-ship missiles, 130 SAMs, at a cost of $13.5 billion. Blues... Lost 52 aircraft, 25 Super Hornets, 27 F-35s. An amazingly low amount of ships, two Anzacs and two Hobards. Fired 200 AIM-120s, 15 Sidewinders, 157 anti-ship missiles, uh, Lorasms. So almost the whole 160. 260 SAMs at a taxpayer cost of $17 billion. Total cost to everyone, $30 billion. Who won? Uh, this time, Australia. A clear win. They've still got some of their Air Force left. They've still got most of their Navy left. China have got nothing left. Everything is destroyed. So well done, Australia. I hope you enjoyed that. And bye-bye.